Good morning, St. Stephen members and friends. Where have you seen God at work this week is a question we've been asking during this season of Lent. Perhaps you've seen God in patient waiting. Perhaps you've seen God in caring, uh, people caring for each other in uncertain times. Hopefully, you'll see God at work today. So thank you for joining us for our first live stream worship service. Though this ministry has been bubbling in, in the back burner for some time, sometimes desperate times call for desperate measures. And so a group of St. Stephen volunteers and staff have scrambled since Friday afternoon and have pulled off of this live stream in less than two days. So that is one place that I certainly have seen God at work this week. Thank you for that great effort to our volunteers and staff that made today possible. And, and thank you for walking with us at this time. In times like this, more than anything, we need to be reminded of the support and love of our God calming us and bringing calm to our community. Can you ever recall such an odd, surprising, and difficult week? We pray that this will be but a blip, a blip that we can learn from, but we are ready to continue as needed to ensure the safety of our most vulnerable in this public health crisis around the COVID-19 virus. And so here we are with our state government discouraging the gathering of groups larger than 250. We will follow that direction and over these next few weeks connect and worship as a church electronically. Let's begin this worship service with a time of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. In confidence of your generous presence, we confess our need for you. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have strayed from your love for us and for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits that we may hear your voice and find what is pleasing to you. Amen. Receive the good news of God's faithfulness and love. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, says our God. All your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Merciful God, the fountain of living water, you quench our thirst and renew our spirits. Bring us to drink from the well that flows from the beauty of your truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's lesson comes from Psalm 95. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God, and a great ruler above all gods. In your hands are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Oh, that today you would hear God's voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day at Massa in the desert. There your ancestors tested me. They put me to the test, though they had seen my works. Forty years I loathed that generation, saying, the heart of this people goes astray. They do not know my ways. Indeed, I swore in my anger, they shall never come to my rest. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The gospel message for today comes from John 4, 5 through 42. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, 
near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a Samaritan woman? Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give them will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything that I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say, four months more, there comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving. Receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and the other reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. 
Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I had ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with him, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe. For we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. So a lot is revealed to us in John 4 and the story of the Samaritan woman. And what may seem like a very simple story has a lot of depth and revelation into the character of God and who we are to God. We know that Jesus is more than human. He is both human and divine. And the imagery in this story is beautiful. We can imagine the hot afternoon sun, the woman and Jesus sitting at the well, the clay jar in her hands, and that they were both in need of water. We can imagine the conversation that took place and the kindness between two strangers. And it is through Jesus' human love in this story that we can understand divine love. So what is divine love? Divine love goes beyond all barriers. It's pure love without judgment. Divine love does not see what is culturally appropriate. It does not listen to the years of hostility created between two people. And in our human form, it's truly hard for us to understand this because we can hold our emotional pain for a lifetime. So Jesus sitting next to this woman at the well was a display of God's divine love. Jesus saw the world with spiritual eyes. He engaged the whole human spirit. He disregarded the rule society created that caused human suffering. When Jesus looked into the eyes of the Samaritan woman, he did not see 500 years of violence and hostility between Samaria and Judea. That is not who Jesus and the Samaritan woman were in this moment together. Jesus did not see with his spiritual eyes his role as a rabbi. It would not be permissible to have a conversation with a woman alone in this way. Sitting at the well together, they were two souls in conversation, both in need of water and each other. And we can listen to this story just as Jesus did and not label the Samaritan woman assuming we know who she is, where she comes from, what burdens she bears. This is a beautiful illustration of God's divine love for God's creation. Jesus did not condemn the Samaritan woman. He simply listened and affirmed the words that she spoke to him were true. Jesus surpassed all cultural barriers. He revealed the unseen. He knew the heart of the Samaritan woman before she spoke. So much so that she had a spiritual experience that inspired her to share it with her community. That the prophesied Messiah that was to come was in her presence. So what we can know for sure from the story is that God asks us, asks us to see with spiritual eyes, to look past cultural barriers that we have created, and to be in relationship with each other. The second thing we can know for sure is that God revealed God's self to us, that God wishes to be in relationship with us, We are not abandoned. God is always here. And the third thing we can know for sure is that God led with divine love. 
The schisms we have created are seen with human eyes, not spiritual eyes. And the relationship between Jesus and the Samaritan woman is a reflection of God's relationship with creation. We need each other. And we are meant to be in relationship with our creator. Our spiritual needs are as important as our physical needs. And God will truly sit with us and show us mercy and love. So even though today we are not together physically, we are together spiritually. We are here for each other, and we want you to know that we are praying for you at home and that we are also praying for the wellness of the world. Amen. this odd time of isolation and cancellation, allow me to reiterate that large group activities are temporarily canceled here at St. Stephen, including worship, Sunday school, confirmation, all choirs, Wednesday meals, activities, and Lenten services too. As of this morning, uh, schools I've heard will be closing in Minnesota from March 18th through 27th, so this will also affect our preschool, I imagine. Stay tuned for more. Please follow our, our email blasts, uh, visit our website, and contact the church as needed. The church offices will remain open during regular hours this week, and pastors and staff will remain available for pastoral care and for other needs. So here's what we ask of you. Pray. Pray for those affected by this virus and for those who will be asked to care for them. Pray for our country and for this world. Be safe. Continue to follow recommendations, to remain healthy by washing your hands and by staying home if you're not feeling well, by avoiding large crowds. Please share information about 
uh, St. Stephen's decisions to temporarily suspend all activities with others that you know. We want to ensure, ensure that everyone gets this information and gets it in a timely way. Continue to support the mission and ministry of our church, St. Stephen. Envelopes that would typically be given during worship can be mailed or dropped off at the church office, or you can give online at our website, stephen.net backslash giving, or of course through our mobile phone site. Thank you again for your partnership and for your support, especially in these times. Please note for our prayers today, after each petition, I will say, hear us, O God, and please respond, your mercy is great. So together, let us turn our hearts to God, who is our source of healing, who is our abundant life, and is our endless love. God of divine love, whose presence knows no barriers, in these anxious times, we ask that you calm our hearts Help us, O oh Lord, to see beyond our own fear, that we may extend your love to our neighbor, to strangers, to friends. Bless our ministry partners at Messiah Lutheran, Tapestry Ministries, Campus Ministries, Twin Cities, the Lutheran Church in Nigeria, and all worshiping communities of all faiths around the globe, as they care for one another and their beloved neighbors. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of living water, open the hearts of all leaders and authorities that they may hear the cries of the suffering and act with compassion toward all people. Inspire the imaginations of those working tirelessly to bring healing and peace during this global pandemic. Bring healing to those we know in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit, especially those we now name in our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the midst of our own anxiety and fear of the future, help us all to breathe deeply and to commend to you all of our fears. We commend to your living presence all those whose lives are at stake, those most vulnerable, and those for whom social distancing is a way of life. During this time when we cannot physically be together, help us to know in the depths of our soul that you are the one that has no boundaries. You are the one who binds us together, no matter the distance. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All of our prayers, unspoken and spoken, we humbly commend to your generous and loving presence. Amen. We pray together the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Oh, my joy. 
joy, my crown. Fair are the meadows, fair are the woodlands, robed in flowers of blooming spring. is purer. He makes our sorrowing spirit sing. Beautiful Savior, Lord of the nations, Son of So now may God, who has called us forth from the dust of the earth and claimed us as children of light, strengthen you on your journey into life renewed. Amen. So marked with the cross of Christ, let's go forth and serve and love the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>